So today's video is all about overhead mobility. I was training a client this morning, and he mentioned that it would be really useful if I could put out some of the information that I was giving him out online. Um, so this is for his benefit and yours. Now, overhead mobility, if you're limited in it, it's going to restrict you in how effective your training is. It's going to restrict you in stuff like overhead squats, which is where most people discover they've got limitations in overhead mobility. Any kind of pressing motion as well, if you're limited in how you can press overhead, then you're going to either press this way or you're going to go into an extension position, which is not going to be healthy for you to do. And also, pull-ups, believe it or not, pulling from overhead. If you're restricted in your overhead mobility, you're actually fighting against that restriction whenever you're doing a pull-up. And definitely anything that involves a gymnastic movement, kipping, um, um, handstands as well, all going to be restricted by this overhead mobility if you are limited. And the first thing most people go to when we talk about overhead mobility is shoulder mobility. And although it's correct that we do need to work on it, I'm going to talk about that later in the video, that is not the first port of call when we're looking at that. Okay? The first thing you have to look at when we talk about overhead mobility is your thoracic spine. Now, the thoracic spine is the region of the spine that runs from the base of the neck to about the base of the rib cage. It's the top part of the S. If you think of your spine as an S shape, it's the top part of the S, the bit that's slightly flexed forward. With today's lifestyle and uh, sometimes with people's training methods as well, that tends to be a lot of people overly flexed forward. So you tend to get in a position where your thoracic spine is rounded forward this way. Now, if your thoracic spine is rounded forward, what's gonna, what it's going to do for your shoulders is, well, your scapula attaches into your spine okay, at that point. So if I'm flexed forward here, the more forward flex my spine is at the top there, the more forward my shoulder blades. So my scapula is being these blades on my shoulders there, okay, the more forward they're flexed. And your humerus bone, so the bone in your upper arm, that inserts into your shoulder blade. So it basically, if I set myself with my shoulders that way, and I do a full range of motion with my shoulder, that's as far as I'm going to go because I'm restricted to the position of my scapula. So if my thoracic spine is tight, then I'm going to really struggle to create any overhead mobility. The second point to go to is your pecs, okay? Your chest here. If your chest is tight and restricted, then that's going to, again, pull you into a rounded position. It's going to pull your scapulas forward again. It's also going to, generally, it's going to affect how that thoracic is as well. So if you're going to get in this position as well, that's going to affect not only your scapulas are going to be this way, they're going to be pulled inward slightly as well. So that's also going to limit that range through that shoulder. And the third thing is that actual shoulder joint mobility and generally a restriction in the latissimus dorsi. That's a huge muscle that runs all the way down your back into here. It runs all the way up into the side of your arms here. Huge muscles. Okay. Now, where people go wrong by going straight to that, straight to that, straight to shoulder mobility, is if you increase your shoulder mobility and you're really successful in actually increasing the range through that lats there and you increase your shoulder mobility just by doing that, but you don't correct the underlying issue of the thoracic spine and the pecs being tight, which is pulling you into the position where your scapula is in the wrong place, then what you're effectively going to do is whenever you're doing anything overhead, you're going to get into a position where you're going to effectively push your shoulder into an unstable position. So whether you're doing an overhead squat, whether you're doing a snatch, whether you're doing a jerk, you're going to push your shoulder into a position where it's not in its optimum point of stability, which is going to leave you, first of all, weaker. So you're not going to be able to move as much weight, no matter how mobile you get that, you're not going to be able to move as much weight. And more importantly, it's going to leave you at a high risk of injury. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on in that shoulder, and it's very easy to damage that. Um, stuff like rotator cuff injuries, labrum tears, um, all going to put you out for a long time. You're going to really restrict your training. And if you're trying to just increase that range of motion in your shoulder, you're doing shoulder stretches, you know, you're wrenching your shoulder out here, you're doing these kind of rotator cuff movements and trying to really like get that shoulder mobility improved just by working on that shoulder joint, you're going to put yourself at a very high risk of injury. So the first thing to look at is the thoracic spine. That's what we've got to get sorted first, okay? We can obviously do all of them at the same time, 
but don't forget this is the most important thing. So thoracic spine is the first area to work on. Next area to work on is opening up your chest and pec, so working through that position there. And the final area then, once we've got those, the final area of importance is then that range of motion in the shoulder. So make sure when we're talking about overhead mobility, you're looking at all factors that are going to affect that. Now, one little final point in that overhead mobility. Well, if you have got a kyphotic, so a curved forward thoracic spine, there may be an underlying cause of that. And this relates to, again, another client I, that I was dealing with uh, earlier in the week, in that if you have, and this is where whenever we're looking at um, people's movement patterns, people's posture, you need to start from the ground up. If you have a problem, and this will happen if someone's been overweight or um, more, more, free, more commonly amongst uh, women that have been pregnant, if you have an issue where your pelvis has moved into too much anterior tilt, anterior tilt, if I just uh, tuck my shorts in here, go for an old school PE teacher look now, and with my, that position there, if my pelvis is in this position, so I've got my backside stuck out there, this bony part of the pelvis is dropped down low, and the back of my pelvis is raised up high like so, then that's going to increase the lumbar curve in your spine. So your lumbar curve is going to be increased because of the position of the pelvis. So my lower back is going to be decreased that way. Now what most people tend to do when they've got that is they tend to increase their kyphotic curve, their curve in their upper back. Okay, So they tend to get this way to compensate for this. So if you have anterior pelvic tilt, and that will be recognized by an excessive tilt of the pelvis in the standing position. If you have that, then you do need to correct that as well as the other areas. You've got to work your way up that chain. Yeah? Yes, I know I'm revealing something amazing, but your whole body is connected. It's not just in isolation. So you have to look at that part. So you have to look at that anterior pelvic tilt fixing that first whilst we work on the other areas because otherwise you're going to not fix this and you're going to try and do this and it's going to be not a great position for you. So we have to make sure we're looking at what this is. Now anterior pelvic tilt can be caused by obviously weakness through your anterior abdominal region here as well, um, tightness around here, tightness in um, hip flexors as well. So we need to look at a lot of areas. So again, you work your way down through the chain. So when you're looking at overhead mobility, sometimes you've got to look all the way downstairs. But if you pass the anterior pelvic tilt part, and if you find that that part is OK, then you can go up. And in the next few videos, I'm going to talk actually from the thoracic spine to the pecs, to the overhead mobility, and some solutions for you guys to actually get yourself into a better position so that you can move through some of the movements you need to do in your training better. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the channel and check us out on Facebook.